Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's Blender tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to combine cloth physics with hair particles. So this is a dynamic interaction here with the hair particles. And this is, might be something that's new to you. Some people might not know about this, but you can actually make the two work together quite well. So we have a cloth simulation here with a bit of cloth pressure. I'm gonna take you guys through the whole process. We're gonna make this little scene here. It's very, very simple, very beginner friendly. We're pretty much gonna be pressing buttons most of the time um, after we've done this really simple, simple modeling. So let's jump into the tutorial and I really hope you guys enjoy. So jumping into Blender, let's select the default cube, tab into edit mode, and let's go into a front orthographic view. Let's go into wireframe, and we're gonna select this top face. We're gonna go E to extrude. And if you hold in control or command, you can snap to the grid. So we're gonna snap it right here on the second line up here. And let's select this face over here. The same thing in the front view, E to extrude, hold in control and snap it over here. And we're gonna do the same thing to this one, E to extrude, hold in control, snap it down to here. And you should be able to see the grid here. It's quite um, easy to see. E to extrude, hold the control, and let's snap it. So now we have this thing over here, which kind of looks like the button on a Game Boy. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna select this face here, and then holding in shift, we're just gonna go around selecting these faces. And then what we can do is go over here to our transform. Let's make it individual origins, and let's go S to scale that like so. Let's go back to median point. Let's select these middle ones. Let's go S to scale them a little bit like that. And now we have this shape over here. And what we're gonna do, so this doesn't bulge out too much. If we go into our right orthographic view, we can go S, Y and flatten it a little bit on the Y like so. In fact, let's flatten it even more, S, Y. And then we can actually select these um, faces over here. I just find this makes it work a little bit better. We're gonna go S, Y and just expand them out a little bit. Then we're gonna press A to select everything. We're gonna go right click, subdivide. Let's go to our subdivision tab here and let's type in four, maybe even more, let's go five. Tab back out. And now you're gonna go over to your modifiers and you're gonna give this a bevel modifier. And you can increase or decrease the amount, but let's go something small and let's increase the segment count to three. Come to the drop down and apply it. Now we have this shape over here, which we're gonna simulate. So let's tab back out into object mode. We're gonna go G, Z, move it up. Shift A, let's go to our mesh options, add in a plane, and let's scale this up eight times. So S8, press enter. Tab into edit mode, and let's select this edge at the back and go E to extrude it up. And let's give it a bevel over here, rolling the middle mouse button to add in segments. Let's tab back out, right click, and go shade smooth. We can now grab this star here. We're gonna go S to scale it down a bit. And let's just select everything, go Control A and apply that scale. We're now gonna select the star. I'm gonna go R45 in our front orthographic and press enter. Now it's rotated like this and it'll look quite good. So I'm gonna actually delete this camera and delete this light. I'm gonna go into my front orthographic and I'm gonna go Shift A. I'm gonna add in a new camera and move it up a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to my output settings and make it 1080 at the top for the X. So now we have a square aspect ratio. I'm gonna bring this guy down a little bit, but still floating above the surface. And I'm gonna move my camera back. Now, if I go into camera view, I'm gonna see this, right? And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make sure to save before we get into our simulation. So I'm saving this. Now I'm gonna select this star. I'm gonna go over to my physics settings here and let's give that a cloth. Now let's go down and enable pressure. And under the pressure amount, let's make it eight. We're gonna go under collision and simply enable self collision. Let's select our floor and give that a collision under the physics. So we have something to interact with. And from frame one, we're gonna hit spacebar. And now we're gonna see this simulating and falling like so. Okay, so let's go back. Here you can see it, okay? You can select it, right click and go shade smooth. And there we have this cool pillowy cloth simulation. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our particles, click on the plus here, make it hair, and then come over here to the hair length and bring that down like so. And we're gonna leave it at a thousand. Let's go down to children, enable interpolated. And let's go under the roughness here and let's come to the end point and increase that to give us a bit of roughness. And as far as rendering go, let's go up to render Let's enable B spline. And just for the time being, for the viewport display, let's increase the strand amount so we get a bit of a nicer look here. 
And uh, let's then also go down to the rendering and that's gonna be under the hair shape. And we wanna make the diameter here something like 0 0.05 so we have a nice thin particle. We're gonna go into our camera view. We're gonna go Control S to save. And one more thing, let's just go back up here to the top. We're gonna to see something called hair dynamics. Make sure to enable that as well. And from frame one, we're gonna hit space bar and this time it's gonna run the cloth simulation and it's gonna run our hair particle simulation. And look how cool that is. Obviously it's a little bit slow and you can see here it's actually caching both of these in, but it's looking pretty cool. So one thing we can actually do here is we can take this, we can also go to our physics and let's just give that a collision so these hair particles interact with it. But um, that is um, pretty much it. So let's just bake both of these. We're gonna save once again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the, go to my physics and let's just start with the, go down to the cloth. So let's just, over here we've got a collision, so we're just gonna minimize the collision. We just wanna to go to the cloth here. And under the cloth, let's just go down till we find the cache. And let's just make it something like 150. And let's go ahead and bake it. And now it's just gonna bake this into our blend file here. And there we have it, it's cached that in. Let's now go to our particles. And once again, we're gonna go down to wherever or up to wherever the um, caching is. So in this case, it's gonna be more at the top. We're gonna to go to the cache. Let's make it 150 as well for the particles. And let's go ahead and bake that as well. And this time you can see it's a different color line. And it's just gonna be caching that in for us. Excellent, so now we have both of these baked in. And this is what we have. So let's also come here to the end frame value, make that 150. And this is gonna be the length of our render. Okay, so now all we have to do is save and let's go to our render settings and we're going to use EV. Let's enable ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, and um, let's go shift A. Let's go to our light. Let's add an area light. G, Z, move it up. Under your camera settings or your light settings here, let's make that 140 and increase the size to 2 meters. Sorry, 2 meters. Z and then go rendered. And here we have this. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate this. I'm gonna move it over to the side, rotate it in, and maybe have it coming from the front a little bit more like this. And I'm gonna increase that strength to 300. And that's looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into my shading workspace. Let's go into our camera view. Z, let's go rendered. And let's select our background and go new. Then we're gonna drag the base color here and we're just gonna type checker and we're gonna get a checker texture, like so. Let's take the scale and make it 12, or maybe, yeah, let's go with something like seven, whatever you guys wanna go with. And um, let's grab the vector here and drag it and just type in coordinate and get a texture coordinate. This is optional, but I'm just gonna use the UV over here. And then I'm gonna tab into edit mode, select everything and just go U and I'm gonna go unwrap. And that just looks a little bit nicer, but that's optional. Let's select this um, object here now, and let's, because we made that out of a cube, that's gonna have its own default material. So let's come here to the principle, let's drag the base color and type in noise, get a noise texture, shift A search, and let's get in color and get a color ramp, place it over here. Let's drag these two values together to increase the contrast like so, and let's give them a color. And this can be whatever you prefer it to be. So experiment a little bit. So I'm gonna go with something like this maybe. Maybe a green, maybe make this one a bit of a yellow, but completely up to you guys how you wanna do this. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And then let's go over to our render settings. I'm also gonna enable motion blur. I'm gonna select my camera as well. I'm gonna to go to my camera settings. I'm gonna to go to depth of field, enable that. Select the eyedropper and then select the object here. And I'm gonna bring that f-stop down a bit. So now we have this nice soft focus. And I'm gonna now go ahead and go Control S to save, render and render image and let's give that a test. And there you can see this is what we have. So the scene could probably do with a bit more light. So I'm gonna go over to my world settings and you can find your own HUIs, but I'm just gonna click on a color tab here, get a um, environment texture. I'm gonna to go to open and I've got a few on my computer that I'm gonna use. So 
Um, but you can find free HDRI files online, like Texture Haven has a lot of them, so check that out. But I'm just gonna go with one like this. Completely optional, but I think it just adds a bit of nicer lighting. And I might just set the strength down to something like 0 0.3. So now I'm gonna try that again, give it a render. And that's looking a lot better. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. You can mess around with the hair length, um, the physics a little bit, but this is how you essentially add physics in the sense of like adding cloth and then adding hair particles. And it works really good. So I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial. And I'll try and upload this to my Patreon as well. So I'll see you guys next time.